Teen Titans Trouble in Tokyo is the final, final send-off for our team and is the Titans' first and only movie. No, stop it. You don't count. I'll get to you another time. This movie released on September 7th, 2006 and on DVD February 6, 2007 and serves as our official goodbye to the Titans after season 5. I absolutely adore this movie. It has such a creative villain and story, amazing fights, and it's just incredibly fun to watch. I'm not quite sure where I would put this movie within the timeline of the show. Glenn Murakami has stated in an interview that the the movie was developed in between seasons 4 and 5, so you could argue that's where the story should take place. Or you could just take the fact that since the movie released after season 5, that's where it lands in the story. Glenn never confirms exactly when the movie happens relative to the show, so it's kinda just up to how you feel. Not that it really matters much anyway, since the story of the movie has no real bearing on the show and vice versa. I tend to lean more towards it taking place between the seasons that the story was created, but that does come with the problem. Robin and Starfire finally make their relationship official in this movie. And in season 5, they don't really show any change between their relationship and just kind of act the same way they've been throughout the series. Though I will say, because of all the new heroes and villains that were introduced and the way the story was playing out, Robin and Starfire didn't really get much time to interact. But I don't feel like it happens after season 5 for a couple of reasons. One, if it does take place after season 5, I feel like we would have seen at least one of the new titans, at least during the opening fight with Psychotech in the city. And two, obviously I have to bring up things change. It just doesn't make sense and feels awkward if this is supposed to take place after things change, but we get no info or even a little hint or nod to anything that happens like how they beat the white creature or any follow up with Terra. Obviously I know this movie isn't about Terra or anything related to things change, but the fact fact things change ended so open-handed, it feels weird to have a follow-up story after the fact and not at least mention or hint at it a little. When it comes to the actual movie though, I remember getting this comment from someone asking how I'd feel if we got a follow-up to who triggered the smoke agent in Slade's mask from the season 3 episode Haunted, and it really got me thinking. I never really thought about the contents of the movie much, since I heavily enjoyed it, but imagine if the movie would have been about the open-ended story from Haunted or, what I personally would have loved, a movie about who Red X is and figuring that out. I feel like using this opportunity of the movie to expand on things that they weren't able to fully flesh out in the show would have been so cool to see. Obviously, like I said, this movie was developed in between seasons 4 and 5, and it's something they had cooking for a while, but still would have been cool nonetheless. Now to get into the actual contents of the movie. It starts off with a new villain showing up in Jump City just blowing shit up for seemingly no reason, so our team comes to the scene to stop him. During this fight, I couldn't help but feel like the Titans were actively trying to kill this guy. Cyborg shoots his arm cannon at the dude and takes his entire arm off, and he had no reaction. But then when he regrows his arm, that's when Cyborg looks shocked and surprised. It just came off like this motherfucker was actually trying to blast his arm off. Then later, Raven crushes him in between two boulders, like there's zero chance she expected him to survive that. Robin seemed like the only one trying to subdue him non-lethally, but then later he does this shit and tries his own hand at taking this guy's life. Also, Robin throughout the show was thrown away and destroyed so many R cycles. Like we get it, Bruce Wayne is your dad and Cyborg could also help build another but bro chill. Let's at least try and pretend we care. I love how Beast Boy was accidentally right multiple times in this movie as well. First, when Psychotech disappeared from the tower and Beast Boy says, maybe he just wasn't waterproof. And they get pissed at him, but like, that's exactly what happened. And then later, he wants to visit the comic building so bad, and that's where the villain was hiding the entire time. After they capture Psychotech, he reveals that Brusho Gun from Tokyo is the man who sent him to destroy the tower so the Titans pack their bags and head to Japan. While in Tokyo, another one of Brusho Gun's creations attacks them, and it's the stereotypical Kaiju Godzilla-esque monster. During the fight, the Titans act like they've never fought in a city before, being beaten by bridges, signs, and electrical wires, even though they definitely have those back at home. Then the Japanese police troopers and Commander Daizo arrive to help them, and it's supposed to show that they have all the criminals in control so they don't need the Titans help, but like, the monster monster literally just stood there looking stupid watching them while they set up the big net contraption to capture it. Later we get this almost cute little scene of Robin and Starfire where they almost finally made it official but then Robin pulls the same shit he did back in season 1 on the ferris wheel. We're heroes Starfire, we don't take vacations, we don't make mistakes, and we don't have time for- For what? for this. Robin, your Batman is showing. While the Titans are out exploring Tokyo, Beast Boy ends up doing karaoke of the Teen Titans theme song, which has been poorly translated. So does this mean that the Titans theme song is canon in their world? Then Robin goes and murders someone and gets himself arrested, while the other Titans are ambushed by Brusho Gun's other creations. I thought... I thought you were stronger. 
And when Beast Boy sees the girl he had a crush on turn into a cat girl, he is suddenly uninterested. I guess Beast Boy doesn't like cat girls, which is strange for him considering he turns into animals himself, so you'd think he'd be into that. We also get another scene where Robin and Starfire are so close to kissing, but then get cock blocked by the entire team. And we get a little sneak peek glimpse at Robin's eyes for a second. Shortly after that, they are ambushed by the troopers and Brushwood Guns creations, and the chefs still apparently? Bro, why are you guys still mad about something that happened hours ago? You're not even working for Daiso. Go home or go back to the restaurant. Then finally, Robin kind of just figures out that the comic building is where Brushogun is, and then we find out that Brushogun wasn't actually the real enemy, but he was trapped and used by Daiso to make himself look like a hero to Tokyo. And the reason Psychotech was sent to Jump City to destroy the tower, and why Brushogun sets Robin free after he was arrested, was so that they can come to Tokyo and help him. I really like this twist at the end here, where the villain wasn't actually the villain, but just being used by an even more evil person. Then a boss fight ensues where they fight a giant Brushogun, and when Robin freeze Brushogun, he just disappears, I guess? Like, I get he died, but why did he just cease to exist? what I've been waiting for. They finally do it. Going from season after season of being teased with the will they won't they, Robin and Starfire finally kiss and make it official. Even though I wish this would have happened way earlier so we could see the relationship grow, I am still happy we get to see it become a real thing at all before the series ended. I want to bring the world to its knees with the sound of chaos. I've decided to squeeze the lost episode in here as well, since it was released as a bonus alongside the Trouble in Tokyo DVDs. The lost episode was apparently a promotional 12 minute episode for the show, and it is speculated to take place after Can I Keep Him, which makes sense considering it was featuring Silky, but before Titans East, which I'm not really sure why it has to be placed before Titans East, because there's nothing here that makes it not make sense past that. In this lost episode, it starts with Beast Boy blasting the same song that Robin was blasting in How Long Is Forever, and then he plugs it into the main power cell that was apparently just sitting in the living room for some reason. It's never been there in literally any other episode, why is it just randomly chilling here all of a sudden. Anyway, they get an alert because Punk Rocket shows up to a classical music show just to be a dickhead and ruin everyone's day. And, um, why is there a wall of amps behind the curtain of a classical music stage? Wouldn't they have no use for that? Also, the Titans were getting thrown around by small guitar blasts from Punk Rocket at the beginning of the fight, but then when he plugs his guitar into the amp and sets the volume higher and higher, they seem to be withstanding the blast and only their ears were affected. I must say, you Titans have proven formidable adversaries. Once you are destroyed, perhaps I shall print copies of you. The villains in Trouble in Tokyo were Brushogun and his creations. For his creations, we have Psychotech, the only one given an actual name, and seemingly the most skilled one. Astro Boy, who just flies around and shoots missiles. Dr. Robotnik, which is an egg-shaped robot with many different gadgets. Ghost Freak, oh wait, wrong show. Um. Ghoul Weirdo, who is just some spooky little ghost guy, and a cat girl. Also the giant kaiju monster that apparently they only make one of, even though making multiple of those would have probably been really hard to beat. Then Brushogun himself, who was shown to almost look like Carnage in the backstory, and was explained to be a villain even though he ended up not being the one behind all of this in the movie. But Brushogun looks so cool and a little creepy, and his ability again I think is so creative. And I love that the creations he makes come out in colors of red or magenta, blue, yellow, and black, like the colors of a printer. Then we have Daizo, the commander of the police troopers who captured and used Brushogun's abilities to cause problems so he can fix them himself, just to make himself look good, and then he has the gall to have an ego. I actually really like that Daizo ended up being the real villain at the end, because the entire time he was bugging me, so I'm glad they gave me an actual reason to dislike him so I don't just feel like a hater for no reason. Then in the Lost episode, we see what was Punk Rocket's debut. We see him in season 5 as part of the Brotherhood of Evil, but he seemingly just comes out of nowhere and is a new villain, but apparently he's been around since around season three. I like that he could fly around on his guitar and he's been shown to actually been able to throw hands as well, but he always talks about how great his music is compared to everyone else's, yet he only always plays the same note. I guess you could say he's a very one note villain. Overall, Trouble in Tokyo I feel is a great movie and addition to the series that is super fun, creative, and has everything that made the show so special to begin with, and also gives us a close on the Starfire Robin relationship, or 
beginning, I guess. And the Lost episode, although short, also has that Teen Titan charm. And after seeing season five, it's cool to see the first appearance of Punk Rocket. Well, that's it for the movie. And while technically this team does make one final appearance in Teen Titans Go versus Teen Titans, that movie serves more as a Teen Titans Go movie. So this is still the official end of the OG series. This series has been super fun to cover, and I hope everyone enjoyed my breakdown of it over these last couple of months. And yes, I will be doing the next video on the Teen Titans Go versus Teen Titans movie, so hopefully you'll join me for that. But for now, for the OG show, this is it. It's time to move on to the next. Don't forget to like, subscribe, tell me how you felt about the movie in the comments below, and thanks for watching.